Hello and welcome to another episode of Living in Tucson, your Tucson Real Estate Connection. And it's that time of the month. The numbers are out for the Tucson Housing Market Update for August 2024. You don't want to miss this one because the market is definitely shifting and buyers are on ice. And we're going to cover what's going on here in the Tucson Housing Market. Hello, my name is Tyler Ford, Tucson, Arizona with eXp Realty. And again, welcome to another episode of my Tucson Housing Market Report. And whether you're a buyer or a seller or somebody interested in trying to figure out whether you want to buy or sell and make an educated decision, this video is for you. But the market is definitely changing and buyers are sitting on the sidelines. Unit sales are way, way down. And I'm going to go over the impact that it's having right now in the Tucson housing market. Before I cover what's going on here in the Tucson housing market, I first like to go over interest interest rates to give you a heads up on what's going on with interest rates and interest rates have definitely pulled back but buyers are still on ice even though interest rates have pulled back so with interest rates going down buyers are still sitting on the sidelines and rates are not low enough in order to right now make an impact getting buyers back into the market and another thing that I track that I haven't shown much is what we call the mortgage application index and there's an index that shows how many people apply for a home mortgage which is a leading indicator knowing that people are pre-approved and ready to buy and the mortgage application index right now is at a 30-year low so there's fewer and fewer buyers applying for mortgages, meaning they're just sitting on the sidelines, not pre-approved, ready to go buy a home. So again, that's a leading indicator. But the thing is, it's at a 30 year low. We haven't seen the mortgage application index this low in a long, long time. So right now, again, rates have pulled back, but buyers are still on ice, even though rates have lowered. So right now on a 30 year fixed, the interest rate is sitting at 6.35%. And on a 15 year fixed, you're looking at 5.51%. So we've seen a nice pullback in rates, but it hasn't done it at this point to get buyers back into the market. I recently did a poll on my YouTube channel to see where buyers were sitting in terms of home prices and affordability, as we know, has been a huge, huge problem. It's pricing people out of this market and it has everything to do with rising home prices and also interest rates. So the poll that I did is what percentage of a pullback would we need in order for buyers to get back into the market? And 72% said the market would have to pull back between 10% and 30% for buyers to get back into the market. So coupled with interest rates and the declining mortgage applications and home prices, there's 72% that are saying they're sitting on the sidelines until we get a bigger pullback in home prices. The first number I wanna cover is what we call percentage of list. And that is when somebody lists a home in the MLS, what percent of the list price is a seller getting? And just a little side note here, percentage of list doesn't include price reduction. So it's based on the final list price. And I'm gonna go over price drops later in the video, which you're gonna find interesting. So percentage of list, when somebody sells a home in the MLS, it's 98.12%. So sellers are getting about 2% less than their final list price, but you're gonna be surprised at how many people actually do a price reduction, which doesn't take into consideration that number when it comes to percentage of list. The next one I'm gonna cover is what we call average days on market, or DOM for short. And that is when somebody lists a home in the MLS, how long does it take from the time that you list until the time that it goes under contract. And this is a really important number for both buyers and sellers. What you wanna do is you wanna take a look at a CMA, a comparative market analysis, and look at average days on market of the properties that have sold. 
And uh, if you're a seller out there and you're starting to ex exceed average days on market, it could potentially mean that your home's overpriced. And if you're a buyer out there getting ready to make an offer, pay attention to average days on market. And again, if a home is has a lot more days on market than the average, again, it typically means that it, it's overpriced. And this number is for all properties. And so when you do a comp, you can really dial in on neighborhoods and very specific. So this average days on market number could vary depending on location type of property. So just be aware that when you do pull comps, you're gonna do a you're gonna do a CMA that's pretty specific to your property. But right now in the MLS for all properties, the average days on market was 23 days from the time that it was listed until the time that it went under contract. The number you've been waiting for, the median home sales price for August 2024. And back in April of 2024, I made a prediction that was gonna be the top of the housing market in terms of the median home sales price. And I asked the question to a lot of people, would we exceed $400,000 for the median home sales price in Tucson for 2024? And I said, no, made that prediction. So in April of 2024, the median home sales price for a single family home was $392,000. And right now for August 2024, the median home sales price was 365,000 down from April 2024. $27,000. For townhomes and condos, the median home sales price for August 2024 was $255,000. So again, I don't think we're going to exceed $400,000. We were really close in April, but we've since seen this market slow down and home values have pulled back since the height of 20, April 2024. The next thing I'm going to cover is what we call average dollar per square foot. And this is an another valuable number, especially buyers and sellers when you're running a comp, a CMA. Because when you're selling a home, you want to look at the comps. You want to look at homes in your neighborhood that are similar and what the average dollar per square foot sold. And then if you take the square footage of your home and you multiply it times the average dollar per square foot, you're going to get a pretty good idea in terms of the value. And again, you want to compare it to like homes, whether it's a two car garage, three car garage, pool, no pool. So again, the better you can you can do in terms of really specifying and getting similar properties, the more accurate it's gonna be, both for buyers and sellers. And if you're a buyer out there getting ready to make an offer, make sure you pull comps and look at a CMA and what the average dollar per square foot sold is. And again, I would only go probably 60, maybe 90, 90 days max back because again, this market's changed. So if you go any further and somebody tries to convince you that this is a valuable comp and it's back in April when homes were at their height, I would totally disagree. So again, you want to go 30, 60, maybe 90 days back to look at average days on market. So the average days on market for August 2024, and again, this was for all properties listed in the MLS, was $231 a square foot. The next number, my favorite number, home inventory, economics, 101 supply and demand and you know a lot of people ask me all the time when's this market going to pull back and it is for a couple different reasons one of which is home inventory levels have gone up and uh, the more supply you have coupled with less demand home values start to soften so we're starting to see that but home inventory levels are still relatively low and I think in order to see a substantial pullback home inventory levels would need to more than double from here but the good news is if your buyers out there there's a lot more inventory to choose from we've more than doubled since COVID at COVID I think at the low we are about 600 active listings in the MLS so we've more than doubled so home inventory levels are going up and as a result, like I talked about, home values are coming down. So right now in the MLS for home inventory, there's a total of 2,222 active listings. And that equates to 3.09 months of inventory, so about 90 days. So if no other, no other inventory were to hit the market uh, today, all the homes would be sold off in about three months or 90 days. And to break it down, there are 1,753 single family homes, 
There's 164 townhomes. There's 175 condos, 101 manufactured homes, and then 29 mobile homes. So uh, breaking it down, uh, as you can see, home inventory levels have definitely started to go up. And it'll be interesting to see what happens being in an election year. People are sitting on the sidelines, potentially heading into a recession, and the Fed's actually going to be lowering rates. It'll be interesting to see what happens. But pay attention to home inventory. And back in 07, 08, like home inventory exceeded well over 10,000 active listings, and that's why the market plummeted. So again, it's a number that I look at each and every day and pay attention to. And so if you really wanna pay attention to the market, pay attention to what's going on with home inventory levels. This next number to cover is what we call price reductions. And I've been doing this market update forever, and I did not cover price reductions because it wasn't a stat that the MLS gave us, but we recently switched over to a new vendor and now we've got access to price reductions which I think is a valuable insight for both buyers and sellers out there. So right now active in the MLS 45% of all listings active in the MLS right now have done a price reduction and they've done them at day 16. So if you're a buyer out there and a home is freshly listed less than 16 days and hasn't gone under contract, there's a there's a 45% chance that they're gonna do a price reduction. And the average price reduction for active listings right now is 6.9%. And then closed sales for August, 2024, 40% of the listings did a price reduction for a total of 5.9%. So something I wanna talk about right here, and this is really important, more geared towards sellers out there. The detriment to any listing is pricing your home too high right out of the gate. What happens is it sits, you end up having to do price reductions, buyers then start to think what's wrong with this property and or it's been on the market they've been doing price reductions and i'm going to come in and make a low offer and try to get a deal so as a seller out there the best advice any agent can give you is pricing your home correctly looking at the comps and being realistic in your pricing. And again, the detriment to any listing, and it can cost you thousands of dollars by not pricing your home right, where it's gonna sit on the market and you're gonna end up getting less. So it's better to price your home right, or maybe slightly less, and to get more people coming to the table, more interest, and as a result, you'll get more for your, for your property. So again, that's what's going on in terms of price reductions, which is a valuable number for both buyers and sellers, just to give you an insight in terms of what sellers are having to do in order to get their home sold. One last number I wanna cover is what we call unit sales. And pre-COVID, unit sales were always at about a thousand units or more sold, and then COVID hit, inventory levels went down, and there just wasn't a lot of inventory to choose from. And as a result, unit sales started to pull back dramatically. But it's a number that, that you wanna pay attention to. And it's another number that leads me to believe that buyers are just sitting on the sidelines. Unit sales year over year are way, way down. So August, 2024, there were, there were a total of 719 units sold. And from last August to this August, we're down substantially. We're down 16.8% year over year. So again, buyers are on ice, inventory levels are going up, so there's more inventory, so that's not the issue. It's just lack of buyer demand out there that is causing unit sales to be suppressed and uh, typically we're well over a thousand units sold. So another number to pay attention to and an indicator as to what's going on in the housing market. Well, that's a wrap for my Tucson housing market report. This market's definitely starting to shift. Buyers are still on ice and sitting on the sidelines. And I think a lot has to do with it too, with the election. People are just kind of paralyzed because they want to know, depending on what side of the fence you're on, what the next administration's going to do. And there's a lot of fear of what's going on because they're talking about taxing unrealized gains on the left side and also putting a cap on rental rates for those investors out there that have rentals. So 
Again, I think there's a lot of fear out there in terms of people just wanting to wait to see what's going to go on with the election and also interest rates. Uh, the feds have been talking now about lowering rates as our economy is definitely starting to slow down and stall. And so as a result, people tend to sit and wait, wanting rates to get to a certain level in order to then entice them to buy, coupled with home values also coming down. So again, there's a lot going on, uh, but homes are definitely starting to sit a little bit longer. And as we talked about, home values have come down slightly. So again, curious as to what your take is. What do you think is going to happen from here? Are we going to continue to go down? Are we going to go sideways? Or will things go, will home values go up if feds start to lower rates? But typically, when feds lower rates, it's not a good thing. So even though rates go lower and home affordability actually gets better, the economy typically means that it's struggling. So it's not necessarily a good thing for the market and the Fed's lower rates to try to get the market stimulated and buyers back into the market. So we will see what happens. Time will tell. If you got value out of this video, do me a huge favor. Give me an internet high five by liking the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and comment below. And for more awesome videos in regards to Tucson real estate, you can subscribe to the channel. If you hit that bell button, each and every time a video comes out, you're going to be notified. And right here, at the end, YouTube's going to serve up another video that you might find interesting. In the meantime, make it a great day. Buying or selling a home is one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. That's why you need a local Tucson expert real estate partner. With all the exciting reasons you have for buying a home, one of the biggest reasons is it can dramatically increase your family's wealth. So whether you're looking to purchase your first home, your next home, a second home, an investment property, or maybe you want to sell your home, choosing an experienced real estate expert to help you will make it a smooth and easy process. And choosing the right realtor can make the difference of more money in your pocket after closing. So whether you're a first time home buyer or a seasoned investor, or maybe just interested in knowing what your home's worth, contact Tyler Ford and team today. Call Tyler Ford and team today at 520-775-3400. That's 520-775-3400.